Patrick Newman is an economics professor and works as a professional forecaster for wealth management companies. Economists frequently try to sugarcoat numbers, but Newman gives his analysis for the United States unfiltered. So what's going on? So let's continue to look at the data. Uh, so there's really been no real scars in terms of real GDP. Uh, this is real GDP starting in, say, 2017, goes to 2019. We all know what happened in March of 2020. It fell off a cliff, and then it's rebounded. A little bit of difficulty going on in 2021, 2022, but now we're actually growing above uh, what the Congressional Budget Office had predicted we would be uh, in December of 2019. We're growing above what's known as potential real GDP. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we can continue on. And this is a, uh, this is a, a, a tweet from an uh, economist, the University of Michigan economist, saying this is extraordinary. The U.S. economy is in a better place than the IMF was predicting back in 2019, despite a global pandemic intervening. Uh, this is the difference between the country's 2023 real GDP and the IMF's uh, pre-pandemic uh, prediction. So you've got the United States. We're doing slightly better, and everyone else is very, very behind. The advanced economies... Uh, the euro area, the world, you've got China, the emerging economies especially have been really suffering. So it seems that we're doing, we're doing fairly good. Uh, I would also just like to point out that during the pandemic, everyone was criticizing our COVID policies and celebrating these country, co countries' COVID policies. And now it seems as though it was, we were so backwards and letting all these people die and not having these very strict lockdowns. And, well, maybe we're just coming out ahead, right? That's not the whole story, but <laughs> it deserves to be mentioned uh, at least. Uh, <clears throat> this, is a, this is a great, great graph. Uh, so we saw some uh, stock market, uh, the Dow Jones and S&P 500 uh, pictures. Uh, in our last, uh, last presentation, uh, this is the inflation-adjusted S&P um, uh, 500. Okay? And you can go back all the way, really, until the 20s. And this is just looking at, so adjusting for the inflation, the CPI inflation. Uh, you know, this is the trend, huge increase. But December 2021, as we all know, if you put money in there, uh, you really took a nosedive. Um, even now, even though the market's recovered a little bit, uh, you know, it'd still be down. But... The important thing is the trend. You see it, it, it it's, it's basically, it's, it ha, you know, it's, it's still on its trajectory, right? Okay, there's been some, some volatility, but again, it's, if you put your money in the, in the market in 2024, uh, you're roughly where it would be expected, right? Uh, it did not look like this inflation adjusted in the, the 1970s. Uh, but that, that's a story uh, maybe for later. One also should not forget that the Fed's artificial stimulation through monetary policy is bound to lead to malinvestment investments, made not because of the true market demand, but due to the increase in money supply. Such investments are then not sustainable in the long run, leading to economic distortions and eventual market corrections. Okay, and then there's this famous tweet by Paul Krugman. Uh, the war on inflation is over. We won at very little cost. Uh, of course, it would be at very little cost because you're excluding everything that people buy. Uh, food, energy, shelter, and used cars. If you take away those payments, yeah, everybody's monthly. You know, pun, pun, little cost, pun intended. Uh, but if, if you take those, those items away, okay, right? We're the, all, just only the things people need, uh, which I, I thought this was funny. Uh, Twitter said, well, readers added context. Uh, they thought people might want to know the exclusion of food, shelter, energy, and used cars is misleading, uh, which is true. I mean, it's kind of unfair to exclude things that people need. But his, his argument, I mean, he's, he's trying to be very contra you know, trying to be uh, very incendiary and incite some, um, <clears throat> uh, get, get some people angry. But he's basically saying, well, looking at inflation, it's it's not spreading. Uh, it's 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 in it's in fewer and fewer goods. Okay, so. Uh, from this, uh, we might think that the Fed has really managed to lower inflation. Inflation was 8%. It had peaked at 9% in June of 2022. And now we're at 35 3.7%. 3 the next number that's going to come out, I believe, next week uh, will probably be lower simply because gas prices uh, have been falling um, over the past month. Uh, you, you track those on a, on a daily basis pretty much. 
uh, and you say, well, look, in inflation, it, it, it's, it's not nearly as bad as it was in, in, in the spring and summer of 2022. And the Fed's done a, a great job uh, at, at conducting monetary policy. Uh, we can see, as, as we've already been discussing, that the Fed has raised the federal funds rate to about five and a quarter, five, uh, 5.5%. They recently announced this week that they're not raising rates, at least at the current meeting, though future rate hikes may be on the table, but we will we'll have to see if they'll do that again. So uh, if, if we look at this chart, it seems as though the Fed's tightened. They've brought rates really up to where they were before the housing bubble and then kind of right where they were uh, in the late 90s. So it's okay. We, we, we've raised rates to uh, high levels, especially high levels over the past 15 years. Um, and we, we can see that here with the, the dotted line. Um, this is the federal funds rate inflation adjusted. It tells a little bit of a different story. So adjusting for the CPI, okay, uh, the, the federal funds rate, which is the, the rate the Federal Reserve technically doesn't set, but it tries to influence heavily. And, okay, adjusted for inflation, right? So really interest rates... Uh, the federal funds rate was, was quite negative after 2020, and it's gone up, but it's only barely been positive uh, very briefly. And it's actually not as high as it was during the, right before the housing bubble, the mid-2000s. And it's mm, not even as high as it was in the late 90s. Interest rates are still relatively low, right? Once you take in consideration the inflation that we've had, and even 3.7% inflation, that's still very high inflation, uh, too high for the Fed and too high for um, uh, your, your average person. Okay. Uh, let's look at some other monetary indicators. Okay. This is the money supply. Austrians are very fond of, of showing this. I am as well. Uh, this is a statistic that has really fallen out of use. The Federal Reserve does not even track the money supply anymore. Financial markets really not won't move on that. It was very different in the 80s. But we can see the... Uh, the trend line, and then we all know what happened. There was this huge increase. Uh, the government, uh, the Federal Reserve, was basically printing a bunch of money to finance a lot of the government's borrowing costs during COVID, the stimmy checks, as they were uh, so lovingly known. Um, and then we say, all right, well, the Fed's increased the money supply tremendously, uh, and now it's actually gone down, right? The Fed has been sucking money out of the economy. Right? So we would expect that this is significant monetary tightening and this is reducing spending in the economy, right? More money, people are going to spend that money. If you take money out of people's bank accounts, people aren't going to spend as, uh, as much money. It is typical that the Fed has difficulties in predicting or even caring for the long-term economic consequences of their policies. However, now the big question is, what does that mean for 2024? Let's look at it after the Fed has tightened. All right, the Fed started raising rates in March of 2022, and they've kept raising rates. So let's look at it over the, over the, 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 the next year, basically until the second quarter, about the summer of 2023. Nominal spending has, has slightly fallen. It went from about 6.4% to 5.9%. So that means the demand for some goods are not increasing at the same rate. Uh, as they were previously. This is some of the Fed. This is the Fed sucking some of the money out. Uh, but the CPI is, is, is a lot lower, right? It's about 3% each year. So there's a huge uh, decrease in prices, even though there wasn't a huge decrease in spending. Okay. The Fed's tightening hasn't really started to affect the economy yet, right? I'll talk about it. Might, we might just be starting to see this but it's, it takes time, and especially this makes sense given that real interest rates aren't actually that high, right? Once you adjust for inflation, as I, as I explained. So as a rough approximation, this could be subject to uh, you know, a wide degree of error, but I, I think, it's, I think I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident in this, that the Fed caused inflation to rise from about 2% each year to about 35 to 4%. Maybe at one point it was 4.5%. So that 9% inflation... And I had said this in, in earlier uh, presentations about nine, that 9% inflation, uh, you know, large part of that was supply shocks, about half of it uh, was, okay? Uh, but this is still an, a, a significant increase, right? And, and this is the real problematic um, in, in, in inflation that's tough to, get, tough to get rid of. 
And uh, you know, really, the Fed's tightening hasn't started to cool the economy. We can just see this from, again, just look, 6.4% increase in spending each year to 5.9% increase in spending each year. Now, I don't think the nominal spending should be stabilized or it's a problem when it goes down, none of that. But this is at least, I think, one of the best measures of overall inflationary or spending-induced price increases. It's only barely started to actually impact spending, right? So I, I think a lot of people are, are celebrating, uh, the, the, they're doing their victory laps a little too soon because we really haven't started to go through uh, the, the, the tightening yet, right? And in fact, nominal spending and inflation both picked up in the third quarter, right? That little green arrow I showed, the, the, the monetary spigots, we keep spending money. The demand for money keeps falling. People are spending away their excess COVID cash bounces, going on big vacations, uh, so on and so forth, all right? So to answer my question, like, are we headed for a recession? Right. Let's, you know. So option one is to stop raising rates, which seems to be what the Fed has done right now. That's at least where they're posturing themselves to be. Um, so I think that the boom, uh, the boom sort of will end or it will, it will kind of really, really continue. Uh, I think it's, it's at least a lower likelihood that a recession hits in, in 2024 and that inflation will drop. So we're really going to see, it might be more accurate to say that the boom will kind of continue, um, maybe at a not as, 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 as fast of a pace, but it, it will keep going on, right? Which I, I think uh, could be likely uh, next year for a variety of reasons. Uh, option two is to keep raising rates. Here, I think the boom will, will definitely end. Uh, I, I do think the Fed needs to actually raise rates. And if they kept raising rates vigorously with those uh, jumbo rate hikes of, uh, you know, three quarters of a percent, uh, half a percent, uh, percentage point, et cetera, instead of the small 25 basis point increases that we've seen, uh, they've been able to keep the, uh, the monetary inflation running. I think if they keep raising rates, there's a higher likelihood that the recession hits in 2024 and that inflation will drop. I think it's likely that the Fed's going to probably not keep raising rates you know, I, this is a great article from Barron's that recently came out. The stock market hinges on Fed chair Jay Powell's every word. And now the presidential election could too. Let's not forget that the Federal Reserve did not start to raise rates until March of 22, just coincidentally around the time that Biden reappointed our, the Fed chair. Right? Like, it, it, it seems unlikely that the Fed's going to raise rates and cause a recession um, when it's guardian, so to speak, is, is up for re-election or the, 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 the government. Um, it, 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 seems, it seems unlikely. So I would put my greater weight, at least on saying that we're going to see continued inflation above target. Uh, but we could start to see some significant uh, difficulties, uh, problems brewing. Right. This is the uh, housing prices, all transaction housing price index in the United States, divided by what's known as owner equivalent rent, which is really how the CPI measures inflation. They ask uh, people how much they think they could rent their apartment out for. All right. So huge increase during the housing bubble, and then home prices fell. And then we started to see an increase a bit for a variety of reasons, but then another huge spike up. And what this really says is only one of two things. Either home prices have to fall or that owner equivalent rent will continue to increase and keep up inflation, right? And right now, it seems as though more and more people, a lot of people don't want to sell homes or interest rates are high. So um, you know, people don't want to sell their home and buy another home. Uh, I could see the owner equivalent rent continue to increase um, you know, and that would keep up inflation. But this does sig signify to us that home prices are out of whack, so to speak, right? This is commercial real estate. This is definitely some uh, sector that I think if we do enter a recession, this will be a troubling sector, much more than say houses will be, at least my prediction, uh, housing was much more serious during the financial crisis, okay? Uh, we could talk about commercial real estate loans, are going down. Uh, this could affect, is it really starting to affect regional banks? I think this will be a difficult, uh, troubling area. And then we've got car loans. Um, 
Auto uh, delinquencies are up. The percentage of borrowers at least 60 days late on their car loans is the, is the highest on record, right? This is gonna be a troubling area. The unemployment rate has started to actually go up. And once it starts to go up a little bit more, then it says an indicator of a recession could be on the horizon. Okay, so we're at 3.9% and uh, it will start to trickle up gradually and, 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 and that's something to look out for. So uh, inflation's fallen, but I think most of the uh, decreasing inflation was supply shock related. The Fed's hikes haven't raised real interest rates uh, or cooled monetary inflation enough. So I could see the, the, the sort of the, the spending keep, keep on going on at least through most of 2024 and then uh, maybe start to go downhill, uh, really start to go downhill in late 2024. Uh, and if the Fed stops hiking, I think inflation is going to remain above target. Uh, and if the Fed hikes more, there's going to be a higher likelihood of recession. I just don't think that's likely. So I think we're going to start to see more and more difficulties emerge maybe next year. But we're really going to start to see the pain probably come uh, later on, right? So those are at least my, uh, my, 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 my predictions, um, at least what I think is going on with the macro economy. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy videos like this, please subscribe and hit the notification bell.